Welcome back to the fifth video in my Tone Stack series. Today I'm going to discuss the Bright Cat for a Fender tube app. I'm going to bring up my software, flip it over to Fender, show you the circuit. Here's the circuit. Fenders typically come with a 120 picofarad Bright Cat. I'm going to turn off all the other design filter design points. So basically, this is the tonal response curve for a Fender tube amp, 70 watts. I can play, I'm going to turn off the log pots, just so I can control better. So I can adjust the treble, I can adjust the middle, I can adjust the bass, uh, adjust the volume, and all well and good. Nice pretty picture, but without context this really doesn't mean a whole lot so by context what I mean is what instrument are we playing are you playing let's turn on a guitar somewhere around 80 Hertz to a little over a thousand Hertz this is the fundamental frequency range for a guitar when playing through the amp so now the tune stack makes sense it says let me reset at midpoints and volume full tilt I have a sag here just a little under the the mid frequency fundamental frequency range for a guitar if i were to change this to a b flat harp uh, the sag is on the bass side don't much care about that the mid range and higher end is is perfect for a belief b flat harp player the bright cat will not be perfect but we'll go into that so let's go back to a guitar what size bright cap do we need for this guitar sort of depends a lot of it sort of depends so I'm going to show you manually first how do you size bright cap so I'm going to size a bright cap based on this when you start playing a guitar you, you, you get used to what it can do and the first thing I notice about what folks will do they start eking up and eking up and eking up the the treble and it may be that it is not bright enough or it may be okay there but they turn the volume down so they turn the value down and then they notice it's not bright anymore it sounds muddy it's not what I want so I need a bright cap and we're going to turn a bright cap on to compensate for that and this is the bright cap total response line it is brighter across the frequencies than the standard how do you design that so going back to the treble filter only so I max out the treble and then I'm going to adjust the volume until it is at reaches its minus 14 dB point or if I'm looking at the gain chart it's here at 20 percent gain what I've noticed over the years at 20 percent gain or less or minus 4 which is equivalent to minus 14 dB or less with the treble maxed out you're going to lose a high-end frequencies and that's the reason we need to design the bright cap is to bring them back it basically the bright cap will give us a different tonal, tonal response curve that compensates for a lower volume setting going back to the mice to the db chart that's the reason i set that point there a lot of experience that goes into this and it seems to be an adequate point and then what we want to do is we want this tonal response curve to be at minus 4 dB or 10 dB up from the tonal response curve shown in black so what I would do then is start adjusting and you just can't use any value at the bottom left is a capacitor center capacitor chart for these capacitors there's certain standard values you can't buy value in between they don't exist they don't make them in order to have a value that's somewhere in between you have to buy two capacitors, say a two, uh, 270 plus a 33, that'll give us about 310 picofarad. But you can't buy 300 picofarad. You'll have to buy a combination of capa capacitors to do that. But let's put a 220 in. When I put a 220 in, I'm up 8 dB, and I have mid-range frequencies are a little bit brighter at that point. So... I would be happy with that. Let's say that I went to a 470. It is now very bright. It is uh, 12 dB up. Very bright. 
And but it could be that you want that because you're playing in mi the mid frequencies, not so much up at the higher notes, but your playing style or your genre of music may be here in the middle. In which case, that would make a perfectly good sense to size it for that. But for the next player who uses your amp, it may be just the wrong style. So what what do manufacturers do? So Fender, Marshall, Vox, all those guys out there, they go. Who are my normal uh, clientele? What do they say about my amp? What do they like about my amp? What kind of playing styles are people buying my amp to play? And then they decide what the size of the capacitor for, and this is a dollar. Why not have it adjustable? Well, the reason they don't make it adjustable is because this is the adjustable capacitor. It's a wafer style capacitor, and it's 150 bucks. And generally, rule of thumb is, wherever the price is of the component, you multiply it by three, and that's the price to, to charge the customer. A few hundred dollars to install this, or if I buy a capacitor for a dollar, times three is a three dollar change in the design. Now then, the capacitor is wired across the two terminals on the, on the volume control. You can open up your amp and change it out, or you can open up your amp put a switch in to say I want to switch it from one to another value maybe from a 470 which is shown on the screen and then I'm going to put it back to 220 just because you have two different styles you want to play and that would make sense it'd be a quick a $5 switch a couple bucks for the capacitor and off you go now then that's the manual way of going through it a little trial and error. So I've automated that for you on this software. So what I have done is say if I it's going to recommend a 330 capacitor for this amp with these settings. So if I put a 330 in there, that's where it's sizing it for. If I go to a B flat blues harp, again that's going to be too much. What does it size it to be? It says I'm going to need a 220. You go, okay, I need 220. Well, we don't get hung up in, on the values. Either side of that is going to be fine. I install 180s because that's why I buy a lot of. And what happens if I put 180 picofarad in there? It changes it down to about 8 dB up. I put the 20, 220 back in. Bumps it up a little bit. It's not a showstopper. It sort of gets down to what's in the parts box. I have a 180, got a 220. What else is going to have? I may have a 270. That may be a bit much. Not really. So you have options. It's not going to make a lot of difference. What's going to make a lot of difference if I go from a hundred? Let's go back to a guitar. Go back to a guitar. If uh, standard stock issue is a 120, it's interesting doesn't help a whole lot. It's a subtle difference. If I go to a 470, it's going to be a big difference. Now then, I've shown you this for a Fender. Now that I'm just going to go off to the Marshall amp. I'm going to turn a lot of this off so we can take a look at the tone stack itself. A Marshall response line is flat. If I put in a, here's my tonal response curve with a bright cap, I can put an 82 in, I can put a 470 in, it doesn't change a lot. The reason for that is a Marshall tone stack is a rather flat response. If I go back to the Fender though, because a fender has a very marked slope to the tone stack. It is a very much a deep V cut. Much sharper. So if I run from again 82, brings it down to a 470, it changes a lot. Very pronounced change. So Sizing a bright cap for a Fender, a lot of personal choice. There's software here I, I can supply to you to give you an estimate of a good starting point.
You can download it and use it. It's a personal preference. You might consider putting uh, sizing two different capacitors depending on maybe there's a couple different versions of or genres of music you like playing. You want a bright cap for one versus a bright cap for another. A lot of personal choice. You can design it. And that's how you design a bright cap for a Fender and the range of expectations for what's coming out on that. So, thank you for watching. I hope you find this useful.